ClickTap has just released their own AI app. It's called BrainMax. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how it works. You're gonna understand that this new tool is not a big leap compared to what ClickUp offered in terms of AI, but it offers you a whole different app to manage your different conversations with AI models and use the latest AI models of the biggest three contenders, Gemini, OpenAI, and Anthropic with Cloud. And if you don't know me already, my name is Ramsey and I founded Upsys. We're an agency that helps businesses like yours systemize their operations with solid ClickUp builds, automations, and nowadays AI agents that helps you speed up your workflow. Now, if you're ready to go for this quick tour of ClickUp Brain, let's get started. So I'm on the ClickUp Brain webpage right here. And as you can see, it's another big slogan of ClickUp, one AI app to rule them all. And it's a bit of the same philosophy as ClickUp. They want to integrate everything in one single UI, in one single software. So as you can see, it offers you a very similar interface to what you can have with ChatGPT or Gemini or Cloud UI. And it's basically like a chat box that you're able to ask any questions to. And behind the scenes, you can choose any models you want of the major contenders. So you can choose models from Gemini, from OpenAI, from DeepSeek, and from Claude. And I haven't seen DeepSeek in developable models in the actual UI. So maybe they'll bring it soon. Maybe it's a matter of privacy. I don't know. But at least you have the three big contenders with Google, OpenAI, and Claude. And that's more than enough to leverage AI in today's world. Now, you can also add context. And that's why this tool is pretty cool. Yes, Google and OpenAI and even Claude nowadays allow you to connect Google Drive or Dropbox, but you can talk with those software in natural language. And you can especially talk to ClickUp and also to Google Calendar to set up calendar events for you or to create new tasks or to summarize what happened in a list on a certain day. And in this interface, you can obviously see your history You're here on the sidebar. I'm gonna show all of that later. Now there's that whole marketing discourse that you can see right here. And let's now talk about one thing before I show you how to install the app and how to set it up and get started. That's pricing. Now, ClickUp Brain is included in your AI subscription with ClickUp. AI standard starts at $9 a month, but I think it'll ramp up pretty high with $20 or $30 a month. It depends a little bit on your plan, and I think this pricing is moving around, so there's no clear pricing. But one thing is for sure is that you're paying for every single user on your workspace, which means if you have 10 users, that's at least $9 a month per user. So if everyone's using AI in your company, or at least like 70, 80% of your whole team is using AI, it makes sense. And I think it's worth it because you're going to have access to all the models in one single subscription. But if you're the only one as a founder, as a CEO using it, obviously it makes less sense and you're going to be paying for everyone while they're not even using it. So I recommend you first to create the AI practice in your company and make sure that everyone's your team is aware of what AI is, of the latest models, of how to prompt correctly and ask the right questions and add context. And if you had that AI education, then you can go for one of these plans. Now, educating on AI and setting up AI agents and prompt libraries is what we do at Upsys. So if you're interested about that, you can book a discovery call with us and we'll be happy to help you leverage AI in and out of ClickUp. Now, with that said, and with pricing disclaimed, let's get started with installing ClickUp Brain. If you get back to the homepage right here, you can download it for your operating system. It's available on Mac OS, but it's also available on Windows. Now, because I have it installed, I'll just go to the app right now. And I'm connected already. And in the beginning, it's going to prompt you to connect your ClickUp workspace. It's pretty straightforward, but once it's installed, you should see your different workspaces connected here. And in the bottom, you can change workspaces. So if you have an AI subscription, you have to select the workspaces that has it. Otherwise, you'll end up being limited. And I think it's free in the beginning. There's some sort of trial even for free users. But if you're not paying for AI, eventually you're going to have to pay and they're going to prompt you to pay and subscribe to an AI plan. Now switch workspaces. And I picked the one that I can use for a demo, not to have my personal information in there and company information. And in here, you can see that we obviously have access to the previous conversations, but that's where it gets interesting in the models and in the apps area. And let's start talking about the models. 
So you do have access to four main model families. You have Brain, you have Claude, you have ChatGPT, and you have Gemini. And I'm going to advise you when to use each model. So I recommend you using Brain, especially when it comes to interaction with ClickUp context, because that's the only one where you can mention a person or a list or a task just by clicking add and just picking it or searching for it. And if you want to mention a task called create budget, I can just do add create and find it will pop up up there. So that's one way to discuss with the ClickUp context. And if I want, I can say like summarize the projects in video shoot template, for example, and let's click enter. And that is something that we have in our ClickUp workspace. So it summarizes the project overview and answers me in natural language and even gives me a link to the actual task. And if I open it up, I can obviously see it in ClickUp. So even though ClickUp Brain is a standalone app, it's constantly connected to your ClickUp account and it can have context of whatever happens in ClickUp. And it's not very different from the ClickUp Brain option that's available here, but we'll get back to that after we've done a full tour of ClickUp Brain. So that's pretty cool. And that's the first way you can use ClickUp Brain Max by interacting with the actual ClickUp Brain that's available in ClickUp. Second way you can use it is by using Claude. And it looks a lot like the user interface you'd have with Claude. You even have their own logo. And in here, you can actually prompt the model. You can pick any model you want available out of the modern Claude models. So they offer you Sonnet 4, Opus 4, and Sonnet 3.7. And to be honest, that's quite generous because Opus 4 is a very expensive model, which means if you're really, really milking it, it's going to be more expensive for ClickUp than the subscription you're paying. And I think they kind of like compensate for that because they know you're buying for your whole company and you're not always going to use Opus. And I hope they keep it there because Opus is probably the best model out there when it comes to like coding, reasoning, thinking, and creating natural long form content. So. I recommend you using Claude when it comes to problem solving and creating COD or long form content, for example. It's really good at coding. And let's use Sonnet for this example, which is already a really good model when it comes to that. And we're going to ask it to create an app of tic tac toe I can play on my browser. It's going to think for a little bit, understand what I want and it's going to create the app. It's done it in HTML in here. It's created the game board and everything, the little cells, the little buttons. And if I were to copy and paste this into my code editor and launch it in my browser, I'm pretty sure it would work. So Claude is really good at coding, at problem solving. You can also ask it to fix a bug by just copying the bug in there and assessing what they do. And that's what Claude is good at. Another cool use case of Claude is generating content. I find the content output to be more natural than what ChatGPT or Gemini output. The Claude is really my favorite model right now, and I've been using it a lot inside of BrainMax. Now let's talk about ChatGPT. ChatGPT is kind of like the Apple of LLMs. They offer like four models, 4.1, 4.0, and then 01 and 03 mini. 4.0 and 4.1 are the most advanced. They're the ones that are for problem solving and complex math problems and things like that. So if you have things related to coding, problem solving, these are the models you need to go for. But because ChatGPT is a very vanilla and lean model, it's also really good at like understanding an image, answering an email, preparing some content, and it's really good for like the basic stuff. So where Claude is kind of like your problem solving, your thinking AI, ChatGPT is your day-to-day -day AI, I would say. So let's use 4.0 and upload an image. I'm going to go to my downloads and in here I have an image of a little icon, a lab icon that I can just paste in there. And I've asked it to output an email for my graphic designer to bring it to 10. So it's capable of looking at the image, telling me the color contrast is okay, the borders, the background, and everything like that. If I want, I can say like, how would you rate it out of 10? And as you can see, GPD is pretty good at dealing with images, understanding how they look and giving feedback, writing a simple email. So I recommend you to use it for this use case, maybe uploading an image, asking for feedback, preparing, rephrasing, fixing some grammar, these kind of simple tasks, it's more than enough. Then final model and my favorite model when it comes to research is Gemini. Now inside of Gemini, there's actually four models. Gemini is developed by Google 
And in here you have 2.5 Pro, Flash, and 2.0 Flash and Flashlight. Now I recommend you to use Pro and Flash in the 2.5 version, which are the latest and the most performant. You want to use 2.5 Flash for basic tasks, kind of like we were using ChatGPT, but 2.5 Pro is better when it comes to thinking and reasoning and problem solving again, as well as researching documents or large context, because it's capable of holding a lot of information. So you can even upload like a 20 or 30 pages PDF and it's capable of reading it entirely and summarizing. So that's exactly what we're going to do in this use case. And I have prepared a few PDFs that we have right here. This one might be a little bit heavy, but this one is a pretty long PDF about marketing trends in 2025 and this one as well. So let's have a look and upload them and see what they say. I'm going to upload those and say, give me the 10 biggest marketing opportunities for my agency and based on the PDFs. So it's going to read those PDFs, which are very extensive. There's about 100 pages in each, and they're going to compile them and cross compare the data. And they're going to output a small report of the top 10 biggest marketing opportunities for my agency. Now, here's what it said. OK, here are the 10 marketing opportunities. According to the IBTM Trends Report, that's the name of the file, so that's reassuring. Launch a revenue focused marketing strategy service, specialize in AI augmented content, obviously, create immersive and transformational brand, authenticity and nostalgia campaigns, ESG, geoadaptive. Okay. Then I can just obviously like keep talking with the PDF. Maybe I'm interested in like marketing for high growth sectors. So I'm asking the AI, what are the high growth sectors to target as ICP for my agency? It's capable of going back to that PDF looking deeper into that specific topic, which is the topic that's down here, number eight, and it's going to be able to explore and expand on number eight. So for research, Gemini is really good. Your output is going to be way more accurate than the other ones because it's capable of holding, of kind of like memorizing a larger amount of info. So, okay, marketing, pharmaceuticals, esports and gaming, banking and finance, I like that. I can even ask to focus on esports, and maybe there's a whole paragraph on esports in the PDF that it can just output for me or summarize. Obviously, like talking with a PDF, this is a really cool use case for Gemini. Now, I've talked about the four models, and again, if I were to summarize, Brain, if you want to discuss with ClickUp stuff, Cloud for code generation and problem solving, and natural language content generation, ChatGPT kind of like the day-to-day -day model, and Gemini for research. Now let's talk about the different apps. All right, so I've skipped that part where I connected Google Calendar and I connected GitHub as well. GitHub, if you don't know it, it's the go-to tool for developers. It allows to create different versions and different snapshots of your code if you're working on an app. And Google Calendar is like your day-to-day -day calendar if you're in the modern era. But if you're using another calendar, obviously you can connect Outlook, you can even connect Notion, Jira. They're not against their competitors. They're open to integrating them. I guess they just want to keep it open. And obviously there is use cases where you have documentation in Notion and you want to like just prompt it and question it into ClickUp Brain and that's possible. Now let's go to ClickUp Brain and because GitHub is integrated, I can now ask questions related to GitHub. So what the GitHub integration does is it lets you request for recent commits, recent issues, the open and pull requests. Because I'm walking alone, it's probably not going to output cool stuff for me. So if you're working as a team, it's probably going to be more relevant when it comes to coding. But then Google Calendar might be interesting. And in here, I can ask different things. You know how earlier I was talking about the video shoot template? And it's a thought of a prompt related to the previous conversation I had with ClickUp Brain and suggesting me to plan a meeting on Monday regarding this topic. So let's do that. Because I have Google Calendar connected, I can just say create a calendar event for discuss video shoot details. And then your calendar event has been scheduled for July on the 21st. Let's add some attendees. So I'm going to add attendees to this event. I'm going to add people from my team. Add Anya as an attendee. So this event has been created. And on top of that, it's invited the person to the event because it knows about my ClickUp users, but it also knows about people that are connected as contacts in my Google account. So I can also invite clients if I wanted to, even if they don't have access to ClickUp, just because I have the Google Calendar integration. So if I were to open Google Calendar now, 
I can see that I have an event with this person and it's only being created through an AI conversation. It knew the person to invite and it even references the correct task that I was talking about earlier in the video, the video shoot template. And you can basically make tasks interact with your Google Calendar event. You can display them in your Google Agenda. And because there's the Google Calendar integration in ClickUp, you can also display them right here. You can basically plan your events just by talking with ClickUp BrainMax in natural language. You can also do that inside of ClickUp, by the way, by calling out ClickUp Brain and asking to create events in here. But either way, it's the same technology, as I've said earlier. The only difference being that ClickUp Brain Max is a dedicated standalone UI where you have a more minimalistic view of the different conversations you had, different models. You can even talk to voice. I haven't talked about that, but I think that's a little bit of a, a gadget. But basically, it's its own app. And then you have ClickUp with Brain as a sidebar. And that's a great way for me to transition to when to use Brain Max versus Brain. So ClickUp Brain and just having the sidebar in here is great when you want to interact with context in ClickUp way quicker. Because yes, you can mention it inside of Brain Max, but just being in a document, for example, let's open up a doc. If I were to click here in the bottom right, you can open Brain inside of ClickUp. The good thing here is it has context. It's context aware. If I open it up in the task, in doc, it knows about it. So if I were to create an onboarding task for my new employee and just mention the person and click enter, it will just find out the person. Then it's going to ask me about new stuff. So it's going to ask me, where do you want to put it? Uh, let's put in the new hires list. That's great. In the new hires list. So it has access to the handbook. It has access to my code of conduct, whatever the benefits and every content that I have in here. And it's going to be able to create tasks. And he's just created it in a list. I told him any list is fine. I could have mentioned a specific list if I wanted. But just to show you the example, are these tasks for onboarding the new employee? Please follow the steps outlined in the employee handbook. Okay, create a checklist follow in the task. So now it knows about the task and I can follow up. And because I'm in the context, it's able to interact with ClickUp more seamlessly. So I told him standard is fine. And then it's going to create the checklist. And if I'm happy about it, I'm happy about it. Let's say it should add it to the ClickUp task. So interacting back and forth between ClickUp as the interface and the project tool and brain on the sidebar, I feel like is way better when it comes to personal productivity versus where you're out of context. You're not talking about something specific related to ClickUp, then brain max makes sense and you can code, you can do fun stuff, you can review PDFs and stuff like that straight in brain max. So ClickUp brain max is an amazing tool if everyone in your company is leveraging AI, if you want to use AI to the fullest, if you want to benefit of the latest models, the professional models like Claude Alpus or 2.5 Pro from Gemini, then BrainMax is definitely worth it because you're going to pay one subscription for all the models per user in your team. However, if you're using AI on your own and there's only a few people in your company using AI, using models, it might be worth it to stick with a regular ChatGPT or Claude subscriptions with $20 a month per user. But if you want more education when it comes to AI, and if you want to be trained and educate your team on how to leverage AI and save hours every day, feel free to book a discover call with us because that's what we do now. On top of setting up ClickUp, we think of your company holistically. We think of your systems holistically. And we'll train your team on how to use AI, how to create advanced prompts, and even create a prompt library into ClickUp, because that's possible. As soon as you open up ClickUp Brain, wherever it's from BrainMax or from the regular Brain sidebar, you're able to see your saved prompts. And we've created prompts for sales team to create automated emails, for example, or for the marketing team to generate content just because we have understood their business, how they work, and we can just contextualize the prompt with their SOPs, for example, and generate really, really cool content. Feel free to book a discovery call with Upsys, and we'll be happy to show you what we can do with AI in and out of ClickUp. And until I see you next time, stay productive.